Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, we are checking out the Dart Zone Pro Mark 2.1, the successor to another really popular blaster. I'm excited to check this one out. Let's get going. We're coming off of End War and the Foam Pro Tour. And uh, we did sponsor End War. You'll find us on the bandana somewhere here. There we go. Uh, but uh, we unfortunately didn't make it this year because I was at a family reunion. Uh, we'll have a separate video for that where we played with 20 worker nightingales. Super fun. I had a lot of a good time with my cousins. But when I got back uh, from that trip, I found a package from Dart Zone here. They sent me both the uh, Mark 2.1 and the Mark 1.2. Let's talk about those names for a second. Come on now, with the now the Mark, the Mark and the versions, it's getting a little crazy here. But uh, that being said, uh, we've got a new blaster to check out. Uh, this blaster is an Amazon exclusive. It is a top prime pistol or sidearm blaster. However, I use that with quotation marks because it is a fairly chunky, good size blaster. For size comparison, here is the Mark II, the predecessor, or at least the spiritual predecessor, which, with the muzzle installed, is somewhat similar. I think we've got about an inch, nearly an inch more in the back, as well as uh, maybe a little bit shorter in the front. So it's kind of like the where the grip is, is a little bit farther forward. However, the Mark II had the ability to remove that front muzzle, which really did uh, decrease the overall profile. So it's worth noting that right off the bat, these while this is a successor, they're calling it the 2.1, I, if I had been in charge of this, I probably would have called this a different blaster. First of all, it's mag through grip rather than an, an internal mag, which makes it completely different in function. It's also so much larger that it feels very, very different. I don't know that I could run around with this on my hip necessarily and uh, feel the same way I would with this one. Just for a quick size comparison, uh, we're gonna compare it to a few other blasters we have here. First, I showed you the Mark II, which is obviously quite a bit smaller. Um, I think another great comparison is actually the Aeon Pro because amazingly, and we'll get to the performance in a minute, this hits harder than the Aeon Pro right out of the box. So that is pretty spectacular. But you know, here you can see kind of size comparison. It's obviously much, much smaller than an Aeon Pro. So I think that's a good thing and a good frame of reference to keep in mind. It's this could replace this, and it's much, much smaller. Uh, here we've got a Gecko, which is another community-made blaster. Uh, this gives you kind of a, a feel there. Uh, another one to compare to would be the Fire Rat. We just got these on the website, and uh, the Fire Rat is obviously a little bit more ergonomic and a little bit more like an actual sidearm. We don't have quite as much sticking out back here, and the front muzzle isn't as big. Now, while we're looking at these two blasters, obviously there are some issues with the profile of this blaster. So I would use this, uh, you know, with caution where you're taking it. However, we only offer this in orange for that reason. The Dartson Pro 2.1 is really a powerhouse upgraded version of the two. We get a longer barrel. So because of that, they've been able to cram more performance of it. And because of the longer barrel and a slightly longer plunger tube. At least we believe this is a longer plunger tube. We've got more space back here, so I'm pretty certain it's gotta be longer. If it's not, then it's simply due to barrel length, but we're getting about around 160 FPS out of this blaster, which is remarkable for what is kind of marketed as a sidearm. Now these were used in the Dart Zone Pro Tour along with the other Dart Zone blasters, and it is very snappy. The top feels great. There's a bit of rubberized uh, TPU on the back of the slide. And ergonomically, it feels pretty decent. Compared to something like the Fire Rat, it is not nearly as comfortable because we're not getting that nice contour on the back of the grip. And that does feel quite a bit different uh, when you're actually holding it. Now, part of the reason that this seems so kind of chunky is due to the magazines. These magazines are a brand new magazine size and form factor. They've got these kind of dual lips up front, which make them 
I don't know, kind of actually one of the more unique magazines I've ever seen. It seems that many manufacturers are going to these feed lips like this because it enables for cleaner dart feeding and guiding into the chamber. Um, because your actual uh, follower and or your core can actually push through that magazine without interrupting the magazine or damaging or colliding with the magazine. The blaster includes a number of accessories, some of which I find really useful and interesting and others less so. Uh, as I mentioned in my 1.2 video, I don't find this eye protection to be all that comfortable for my adult face. Um, I don't think I could play with this. It would bother me too much. But I think for some kids and younger kids especially, eye protection is absolutely required for a blaster like this. Next, we get a drop leg holster, which is uh, just fine. It is uh, relatively cheaply made. It's pretty thin plastic, but as an add-on, it seems totally fine. I don't personally love drop leg for the most part. I would rather have it up in my hip just for how I like to run around. But given the size of this blaster, if this was on my hip, I think you would collide with your other gear and with your, your torso quite a bit. So I think a drop leg is probably a good option for the size of this blaster. Also included are three of the new magazines and a holster to hold two of the magazines. The muzzle point up front is very similar to the rest of Dart Zones. So on that note, at least with a little ring of tape, all of our existing barrels and scar barrels can fit in here. They seem to be a little bit looser than some of the others, but our little rocket adapter fits in here. And then you can fire a variety of different ammo types out the front. Uh, keep in mind, this will only work with the lower uh, performance barrels, or rather the small barrels, anything that doesn't shoot a triple mega or a, say, a mega XL, that sort of thing. You could really kind of look at the, <laughs> make the look kind of more cartoony almost. <laughs> it's so big. Uh, but these are scars, so you can actually improve your accuracy. And that also might be a good way to get you down to the right FPS. But it is worth noting that the fit is a little bit looser here. So you're definitely looking at taking a single loop of uh, electrical tape to get that fit nice and snug. Uh, and to make sure that you can remove it. As I said, ergonomically, the grip isn't as comfortable as some of the other co competitors in this space, but it is a very different blaster overall. And given the performance level, it's really second to none. I don't think there's another blaster that you could call in this size realm or form factor that matches this for performance. And I think that's really where this shines. If you want a top hard hitting sidearm or even a, a small uh, primary, this is your blaster. The only downside I can really see at the moment, um, other than some of the minor ergonomic things, are that the magazines are only six round magazines, though we found you can put seven inside. Uh, with seven round magazines, you're gonna have to carry a lot of these to really, to really get out there and play. I would love to see some full lengths out of these. Um, but that does bring me to the other part of the magazines is they are obviously proprietary, so you can't take any of your existing, say, uh, angle talons like this guy here and put them in. They're just simply too large to fit or don't, don't fit this exact geometry. I do wonder if it would be possible to put a Nightingale magazine in here, but now that I'm looking at how this works, there's no way you could possibly do that because the entire uh, plunger tube itself actually moves forward through these feed lips and seats directly with the barrel. And I think that's um, kind of one of the ways they're making this uh, so efficient is that there's a really good air seal, there's no extra air space, there's no gap and nowhere for air to leak out. Now, when I do plug this up with my finger, the air seal is decent, but it's not holding anything. Um, however, if it's anything like any of their other products, I don't think fixing the air seal is gonna make it any better. I was barely able to eke out five more FPS out of this blaster, which is remarkable considering I put a better spring in it, I lubed it up, I tried better O-rings, and really they've just maxed out these. So I have no doubt that the performance out of the box on this is already just maxed out, ready to go. Uh, we will be working on a low power spring for this because at 160, it's automatically eliminated from a lot of uh, 150 games or 130 games or HVZ. And I think a lot of people are gonna wanna play with this. Um, the retail price on this is $100. That's $20 more than the Mark II. Now you do get a few more accessories with that and you do get the three magazines. So I do think it's worth the value. However, personally for me, I don't find the accessories to be as compelling. One thing I will note is when you are trying to fire this fast, uh, you will find that it kind of locks on you. You have to make sure you're cycling, cycling the uh, slide really uh, completely. But uh, that's just a small learning curve thing. 
Ultimately, I think this is a massive improvement on the Mark II. I have really enjoyed the Mark True. It's been my go-to sidearm uh, add-on blaster as like a second, second on my hip kind of blaster at most games. And I think, you know, as long as you're okay with the much larger size and the form factor, it's definitely an improvement. And having the magazines instead of just the five round internal, it, it makes such a big difference when you're playing because you can actually get more usage out of it. These mags are drop fed or are gravity, sort of assisted by the feed lip because if you actually put it upside down, you can make it pop up, which is kind of a nice little feature. So it seems like they will pretty reliably eject. My one complaint, however, with the mag release is my thumb is just five millimeters too short. And I thought I had big hands. I, I literally, it's, it's work to get there. Uh, and it's just due to the size of the grip. So if I'm in firing position and I'm, and I'm gonna be firing and firing, I shouldn't f dry fire it. I can't, I have to choke up and go around the blaster to get that out or, or per, per, potentially hit it with my off hand and swap that way. But either way, I wish, I do wish that mag release just came around a little bit further because it is pretty difficult. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you've seen this in person, can you hit the mag release without, without adjusting your hands? Certainly I know Drac can, but if you know anything about Drac, uh, his fingers are like six inches longer than mine. So, you know, he's gonna be able to do it. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm gonna give this a four out of five stars. I think it's a really solid offering. Dart Zone is clearly committed to just making more and more hobby grade blasters. And I love seeing more options because the more we have uh, as far as options in the hobby and different blasters, I think it's better for the hobby overall and it pushes everybody forward. We'll probably have a few more mod parts for this in the future. I kind of want to see if I can make a mag release that doesn't get in the way and doesn't break off. Might be a little bit challenging, we'll see. And then definitely looking at a low power spring because it just hits hard. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'm out of darts.